Crypto is not money. It just simply isn't. And if you think it is, you're going to want to make sure you hit a subscribe and like because I'm the guy telling you all what this technology actually is. And the stakes couldn't be higher. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, JT, and we are back to the crypto den. Today, we're going to talk about a very serious misunderstood concept about crypto, and it's about money. Even in the word cryptocurrency, it suggests that it is a money, and it simply is not. Calling crypto money or a currency is a gross misappropriation for what this actually is. That is a matter of what. The how is a different answer. Crypto can be used as money, but that's not what it is. If you have a hammer, right, I wouldn't call it a weapon unless you used it to someone. Otherwise, it's a tool. The difference, it's a technology. It's software. And when you buy a token, it's like you're investing in a startup company. You are your own venture capitalist in this world. And it's specifically a software company that is doing something or a software protocol or community. So I'm going to show you some screens. We're going to walk through that concept. Let's get into it. The definition of money. I figured that's probably the smartest place to start. Yeah. Here you can see the actual definition of money is a current medium of exchange. That is literally the first few words, a current medium of exchange. Let me ask you this. Have you guys bought coffee with Bitcoin, with Dogecoin, with Solana, with ETH, with XRP? No, no you haven't. Yet, those things have trillions, hundreds of billions of dollars in them. It is a series of smart contracts, blockchains, Web3, it's a lot of things, and we're going to go into all of that. First, I want you guys to understand crypto is a technology. Specifically, a cryptocurrency or a token is just a file on top of its own system, okay? And that system uses a database called blockchain. Blockchain is what allows crypto to even exist. You wouldn't have crypto without blockchain. That means crypto is a technology. Now, a blockchain, very simply, is a series of computers that is scattered across the globe. No different than like Amazon's data warehouses or Walmart's or any of these other companies. The biggest difference is it's owned by people like you and me. It's owned by a community of strangers, volunteers for profit compared to being owned by the massive corporations. Now, I'm not much of a social activist, right? I believe in capitalism. I'm not saying this for who raw. There's an actual advantage to that, being there's no single point of failure. Just recently, we've had multiple outages, multiple. We had CrowdStrike in the summer. I remember I was at the airport, okay? That was scary. Like, no flights were showing. Didn't know if I could get home. Then we had Amazon, Facebook. In my lifetime, I have seen apps that I interact with every day go down to one issue and build Millions of people are affected. In blockchain, that's not possible because every single person owns their own device, which means you would have to break into 51% of the entire network. Bitcoin has over a million miners, so you would have to get access to 510,000 plus devices. And then you would have to break an encryption, which they talk about here, that is SHA-256. SHA-256 is an encryption method that would take the best computer we got right now, 10,000 years to break. And you have 10 minutes until the password changes. You have 30 30 seconds on Ethereum and even less on Solana. So what you have is this blockchain technology allows all of us to safely put our bank accounts online, which is crazy because you would never put your bank account on Facebook. But with blockchain, you actually could using wallets. Wallets are anonymous. So it's just a long string of characters. You don't know who it is. It's just that's an account. And then you can put money in, take money out, and we can transact with one another without having to trust one another. That's basically what blockchain is. That's what crypto is. Now, the second thing that you need to understand is blockchain. Not only is it functionally what I just described, it is also changing how the internet functions this moment. And look at the source of this. World Economic Forum from February of 2022, they wrote this, talking about the transition. So Web 1, we could only talk to computers. Web 2, we could talk to each other. And in Web 3, we can transact with each other. Literally stripping the need for centralized people, institutions, trusted intermediaries to exchange value, which is paramount. Think of all the third parties you deal with to exchange value. If you've ever bought a house, car, anything significant of a, of a decent size or taken out a loan for anything, investing, doesn't really matter. Think of all the third parties you have. 
I mean, there's multiple people, there's multiple entities. Another little caveat that a lot of individuals don't know about is there are two steps to a transaction. There's the message, hey, Jake wants to send you a hundred bucks. When that message goes out, my ledger, my personal ledger on Venmo says minus a hundred and yours says plus a hundred. Venmo doesn't actually send the money and do anything for a day or two days. You'll probably see the notification, hey, Venmo finally took your money, right? There's the message, then settlement. And with blockchain, they're the same thing. So you get almost instant settlement. You're limited by the physics of reality. How fast can light travel through cables up to a satellite and back? whatever it is. That is, latency is literally the only thing that will delay a transaction with blockchain. So World Economic Forum wants the entire financial system tokenized. They want everything on chain. That is Web3. They're talking about it right here. So crypto is a technology. It's also a transformative concept that is genuinely changing how the internet functions. And then I have another little bit more detailed pick for you guys. But this is basically the difference between all of them. So we have right here, if you're using the internet, you're just storing information. All a computer do, it could do is read. And then it could read and write. So now I can store information. Someone else can look at it and do something with that information. And that's what we're actually doing right now. YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff. It's genuinely just me sharing information, you interpreting it, and then even interacting with it. But it's all about the transfer of information. Back in the day, Web 1, who transferred information between us? Trusted third parties. Newspapers, magazines, TV, media. In Web 2, who does that now? Individuals like me right now or Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is far more successful than any of the media outlets before him because of Web 2. And the same thing is going to happen with Web 2. Three, all because of blockchain. Except instead of information, we're dealing with value, which is a really strong and hard concept, but I mean literally anything of value. That's what Web3 is. There's over $340 trillion of value in the world, from derivative products to real estate to debt, credit, equity. I mean, it's incredible. All of that will be tokenized, all of it. And none of that means crypto is money. In fact, if I go to, I'm just gonna pull this up too, because I feel like this is where, if you don't know what this is, coin market cap. This is like Yahoo Finance of crypto. This is exactly where you would go to look at the markets. They have basically tons of different indicators that I actually do use as a professional. I like knowing that pretty much everyone is scared. I mean, they are they are scared shitless, guys. This is usually a great time to buy when this is in the red. It's a really bad time to buy when it's in the green. The altcoin season looks at a bunch of different things, mainly Bitcoin dominance. How close are we to all the alts pumping? You may not know what alts are. Alts are everything other than, I would, I would even consider, you know, these two main here. They're getting hammered. But on this screen, if you start reading these things, you'll quickly realize that none of it is money. Even Zcash, it is a ledger or a blockchain that allows you to do the same things Bitcoin does, everything I just described, but it's completely anonymous. You can't even track the wallets using zero knowledge proofs, which is a technology. Can you use Zcash's money? No, I can't go into Starbucks and use Zec to get a coffee. Not yet. And that's not really the future any of this stuff is marching towards. The future we're marching towards is Web3. So if I go look at Chainlink for an example, which I talk about on this channel a lot. I'm going to pull up their website and their white paper. Powering the on-chain finance economy. Chainlink is the industry standard Oracle platform. Look at their partners. What they're doing is they are moving data from Web 2 to Web 3. You, you wouldn't use Chainlink to buy coffee. I keep coming back to this. It's not money. Crypto is not money. This is like an API, except they're called Oracles. It's a series of smart contracts, which we haven't gotten into yet. This is an example. I'll explain what smart contracts are soon. But it is essentially a set of smart contracts contracts that create an Oracle. That Oracle automates data transfer. If I have a bunch of data that I want on Ethereum and I want to sell it to Ethereum developers, I would use Chainlink. So Chainlink is used as a utility token to basically stand up markets between people that have data and people that want data. It's not money. It is a token that represents goods and services on its own platform. That's a technology. And then if I were to go down even further into all of this stuff here, into all of these, it's a similar story, guys. All all these things solve different problems than money. Just straight up, that's how it is. That's the truth. Now, smart contracts. These are probably the hardest thing to understand, but it further proves my point that crypto is a technology. Smart contracts are a series of programmatic code that basically allow something to happen without any user input. The first example that 
I can think of is a vending machine. Okay, that is a computer. And when you put in numbers into that machine and you give it its money, so you put in two bucks and you go A4, it now has all of the information it needs to then give you your food. And you can trust that transaction. It's a one-way transaction, but you don't need to tell it what you want. You already did that when you started the transaction. Smart contracts are the same way. If you have all the inputs for a function, you can program it and then you can automate it. And it gets rid of a ton of need for people in between anything from data getting put onto your app to liquidity between liquidity pools between pricing on dex aggregators the list is endless and i get into all that on this channel that's why you just hit a subscribe so you know what all this stuff is but what this allows basically anyone to do is build automated processes directly into their app website whatever they're building and make our lives that much easier which again means crypto is not money. And when I'm talking to advisors and high net worth individuals, it's literally the first thing that I have to combat. If I ask you, is crypto money? Almost 99% of people are going to say yes. I have yet to meet someone that will give the caveat of it could be money, but it's not money because that's really what I'm looking for. That's what I want you guys to walk away with. Yes, it can be used as money, but no, it is not money. What and how? Full circle, guys. And I feel like that's by design. I just explained to you how the institutions that sit between us when we're transacting. No different than how media stood between us in our conversation across the globe. The same thing would be true for transacting value, which means BlackRock, JP Morgan, Bank of America, State Street, Vanguard, all the people that run the world are behind. They, 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 we don't need them to trust one another now because we have the blockchain. It's a liberating technology. It gives us the freedom to escape whatever system they've built for us. And they don't want you to be a part of it because that would just mean that you're going to be able to escape their rat race that we're all subscribed to. They want to keep us under control. And they've been doing it for a very long time. Very long time. I mean, bread and circus, right? That's from Roman Empire. Bread and circus. We are the people being fed bread and circus. The internet was a huge threat because they couldn't control the circus. They still can't. Literally, all of our content is user-generated now. I mean, I people my age, we, we go to TikTok and we do our own research. Or we go to Facebook, or we go to Google, we go to YouTube, we go to videos exactly like this, and we try to develop our own opinions. And the bread, they're going to lose control of too. I mean, with the internet, I can go find local food markets, and then when I'm there, I could just tap with my phone and pay with my wallet in the future. And... They could then have their own wallet and then they can do whatever they want with their money. You know, no bank debanking them because they're doing something they don't agree with or whatever. They don't have a poultry license. so You can't buy their eggs legally. You got to go to the ADA. And none of that because they don't got to know about it because I can just give you a Satoshi for 36 eggs and be on my way. And that's what crypto is. This is going to be my slogan moving forward. Crypto is not money. It's so much more. Until next time, take care of one another. Peace and love, guys.